Thanks so much for tuning in to KEXP, where the music matters. We've got it tuned in at 90.3 FM in Seattle, streaming worldwide at kexp.org. I'm Cheryl Waters here in the KEXP studios with Julia Jacqueline and her band. Hello. Welcome. Thank you. So wonderful to have you here. I absolutely adore the new album, Crushing. Thank you. I can't wait to hear these songs. You want to start us off with some music? Yeah. It's Julia Jacqueline live on KEXP. Right, this song's called... Don't know how to keep loving you. Keep loving me Now that I know 
Julia Jacqueline live on KEXP. That one just guts me. I actually brought tears to my eyes. And I have to say, I got so absorbed in the song that my mind started to wander and I had to like bring myself back and go, whoa, you're live on the air. You're working right now. But that's a compliment to you because I'm tearing up actually just even talking right now and just that I got so swept up and away. So beautiful. Thank you. I'll let you do another one now. This one's called Head Alone. It's Julia Jacqueline live on KEXP. Songs from the new album, Crushing, and that one, Head Alone. I can't stop listening to this record, and the lyrics resonate with me so much, especially on that song, Head Alone. But the songwriting, the instrumentation, amazing. But, oh, that voice, so wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> Tell me a bit how you got started in music and you know, when you were first interested, of course you play, you sing, you write. How did that all evolve for you? Um, I think I, I probably have Doris Day to think. <laughs> um, I, my mom kind of used to play her all the time and watched all those movies she was in. And I, yeah, I think the, f the first time I sung ever, I think out loud was... Um, for a Doris Day birthday celebration on, like, uh, Australian national radio. Oh, wow. Yes. I was six and I sung Perhaps, Perhaps, Perhaps. A bit age inappropriate, but... Um, Do you remember how you felt? Was it... Were you just excited to be singing? Was the performance part of it for you? I don't know. I don't know. I just think, like, 
yeah, I, I, I don't know. I think it took me a while to actually enjoy, enjoy singing because um, then I, I did classical singing lessons for a long time and, like, that was cool but it was also quite restrictive for a teenager, you know, who wanted to, like, rock out. Um, so, yeah, I don't think I kind of really started enjoying playing music until I was about 19 or 20 when I finally, like, got over the nerves a little bit. Did you think this was something that you'd make a career out of when you were younger? Um, no, no. But does anyone? That's what I always think. I'm like, I don't, yeah. I, I didn't know any musicians or anything. I didn't really know. I, I didn't really know what that would actually look like, you know. So, but I'm pleased with the outcome. <laughs> Well, I also am very pleased with the outcome. And again, your lyrics really connect with me and they sound a bit more direct on this record. Some of them are really raw. I know you're gonna play Turn Me Down. That's a great example. I, of course, I love Body as well. And you reference the body in the very first five songs of the record. And mm. I uh, understand from reading interviews that you weren't even conscious of that when you were writing the record. Can you talk a little bit about that and the yeah. themes that maybe were intentional and some that came out that were subconscious? Yeah, I think, I think the great thing about songwriting is that a lot of the time when you're doing it, you don't realise why you're doing it or what you're doing it for. Um, you know, it's funny, like, you do an album and then you do lots of press straight after the album before you even understand what it is you made in the first place, you know? It's only now that I'm starting to really understand this record and why I made it and where it came from. And yeah, I, I think I was obviously feeling a lot more uh, claustrophobic in my life than I had realised. And that kind of came out in a lot of the songs. And yeah, I, I wrote most of it in cars and green rooms and in sound checks for when I was on tour for the first album. So when I was, yeah, definitely um, feeling, I don't know, just my first experience of touring for kind of two years straight. Yeah, that's a lot of intense. touring. Yeah. I, I bet you learned a lot along the way. What's kind of a takeaway for you that you take with you on this tour and moving forward? Um, the importance of saying no. Um, Very good to learn that. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's just, it's a I think it's something that everybody learns that, you know, you don't have to be there for everyone all the time. Um, you can't because you'll end up quitting. I, so just knowing how to, yeah, where to like set your priorities in terms of who you, who you give time to. But I imagine that's a balancing act because you have to take care of yourself. You're the front person. You're the person people are coming out to see, but you're also the leader of this band mm. and you have to make sure everybody else is getting what they need, but also you will need people there to make sure you get what you need as well. Yeah. Yes, it's uh, a daily challenge, I have to say. I've learned a lot, but I'm still, um, I'm still learning right now. Tell me about the time in the studio. It sounds like this experience was a little bit different. Your last record was recorded in New Zealand and mm -hmm. uh, this one in Sydney. And yeah. was, it, was it a different process, a different experience? Yeah, it was super different. It was like, even environmentally, like New Zealand, it was super beautiful and like blue skies and beautiful air. And yeah, it, it was just, there was, we went to bed early, we woke up early, it was very healthy. Whereas this album was like in this real modern studio with like lots of fake leather couches and dark skies and we stayed up late and we, yeah, we recorded most of it at like, you know, between like midnight and 4 a.m. most of the time. Um, so I think that had a huge impact on the record. I bet it yeah. gave it a different vibe. That time of day can make a big difference. Yeah, you know, and there's a lot of sad songs. That's a sad time of the day, I guess, a lonely time. You're very engaged with your audience, and these are very intense songs. What do you want to bring to your live show, and how has it been so far playing these songs? Um, yeah, it's been really different than my first album and quite intense because there's a lot of people coming to the shows with a lot of feelings. Um, but I don't know, I, I think just being a touring musician is just, it's bizarre because you want to be able to connect every night, but it's, it, that's also a lot of pressure to put on yourself. Um, so I don't know, I, I, I'm still kind of 
figuring out how to do this show without ev- without it ever feeling like I'm a I'm a puppet, <laughs> you know. But when you do it all the time, it yeah, it's it's just a hard it's a hard thing to get right. But I don't know. I just I try and just talk to the crowd as much as I can. Um, just try and like ground myself in whatever city I'm in. Um, yeah. It's nice yeah. to make that human connection. Yeah. Yeah. I'm curious, since you have these two records and people are loving the new one and you want to play it and they want to hear it, but they, of course, want to play the old songs that they know really well and with a little bit different tone and emotion and you're feeling this new album, putting it out there, do you find that it's kind of challenging to create set lists from night to night that that accomplishes both of those goals? Yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty difficult. Like, I have no clue how bands that have been around for like 20 years do it that like blows my mind I've got two albums and I'm like every night I'm like what do I do um yeah I don't know and it's yeah when you're doing a set list and every little song is like a different feeling and a different point in your life and a different performance and it can be a bit jarring to jump between but I don't know if you if your crowd is cool which my my the crowds that are coming to my shows are, are pretty cool they're nice people and they seem just like they're kind of just willing to take whatever I give them, which is cool. Well, your crowds do love you. And with just this second album, it was very eagerly anticipated and shows have been selling out. How has that felt, you know, as opposed to a new album the first time around when you don't know what's going to happen and you're building a new audience and coming out with this new record and having this audience eagerly awaiting? How was that? Yeah, it's... um. It's very surreal, yeah, but it's nice. It's, yeah, it's, it's very, I think I need to take a couple of weeks off so I can process something. I've been, been away for a while, so, but, yeah. And when you go home, where is that now? I know you're from the Sydney area, but I had heard you moved to Melbourne and I was there a couple of years ago. I loved it. It's cool. It's a great city. I have, I live there. She's using air quotes. For yeah, I, the world. Like my car's there, and my some of my friends are there. My soul is there, but I don't have a house or anything. But what drew you there? Um, there's a lot of things I could say that would get me in trouble. So it's just I lived in Sydney for ten years, and I gave it my all, and it was time to go, and I. I love Sydney. I love Australia. I I don't want to leave Australia. So, you know, Melbourne just seemed like the logical step and it was one of the greatest decisions I've ever made. Well, certainly a very supportive and thriving music scene there. And a great music scene, yes. You're listening to Julia Jacklin live here in the KEXP studios. Crushing is the beautiful new album and you got a couple more songs? Yes. Okay. This one's called Turn Me Down.
So please just do. after that one that one goes right to the gut that's julia jacqueline with turn me down from the new album crushing <sighs> okay thank you for doing that yeah. i imagine that takes a lot out of <clears throat> you <clears throat> yeah a little bit okay well this is our last song guys great okay it's called pressure to party Thank you. 
Sure, you're not going to go into another one there? <laughs> <laughs> Julia Jacqueline live on KEXP, the new album, Crushing. I love how you look at Heartbreak from a slightly different angle than we're used to hearing. <laughs> Such a great record. Thank you. One of my faves of the year. Thanks to all of you for coming in today. It sounds fantastic. Julia Jacqueline live on KEXP Seattle. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.